Please join me in the prayer of illumination. O oh God, open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and our hearts to receive what you say to us this day. Amen. Please stand for the gospel lesson. There are three readings today. The gospel lesson is taken from John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And from Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. The circumstances of life have a way of robbing us from the joy. We get disappointed. We get frustration. And loss can stick, can suck the very life out of us. Did you ever have that happen to you? Where you feel the life is really sucked out of you from ever feeling joy. But remember Jesus' birth and what it reminds us of. Jesus came to give us truth, give us grace, give us joy. Can we trust that Jesus' presence is with us, will reveal the truth about our lives, but at the same time offer us grace to see things that change? We'll hear this morning. First of all, good morning and thank you for being faithful this morning. Can you feel it in the air? It's starting to get there, the countdown, as we quickly move towards Christmas Day. As I sat down to write the sermon, I thought to me, boy, does time go by really quickly. I never really thought about it that way till I was preparing sermons for Christmas time, Advent, Christmas. Time really flies by. See, that's telling me I better get some decorations out. I better be ready for when the grandchildren show up and say, where's your Christmas tree? And the one thing they look for each and every year Where's baby Jesus? We see you have everything up, but baby Jesus isn't there. Then I get the chance to explain to him, baby Jesus hasn't arrived yet. What a glorious day it will be. In our house, we get baby Jesus to arrive more than on Christmas Day because my grandchildren live too far and only come when they're able to and if the weather permits. So I want us to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And as we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, I want you to remember the heart of Christmas. The heart of Christmas is hope and peace, as we learned the past two weeks. And today we're going to learn about joy in all circumstances. All circumstances, there are joy. We just got to look for it and know that it's there. Next week, we'll learn about love. See, it's easy to get lost in all the gifts and all the decorating and all the parties we need to go to, that we stay, take our focus, our central focus off of Christmas. 
and it should be at the heart of Christmas. Our focus should be on Jesus. In this world today, we especially should be focusing on Jesus. Did we make it right with ourselves and God? Are we making it right? Because Jesus, the gift of Jesus gives us that opportunity to make all things right. Let's introduce you to the joy that is ours, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what situations we face, joy is there. To begin our discussion today, I want to describe a few different scenarios, and you tell me which ones would bring you the most joy. Are you ready for this? If this would make you joyful, just raise your hand. You don't have to stand up. Here's the first one. You go through a drive through or your favorite coffee shop. You order your favorite drink and discover that the car in front of you paid for your coffee or your drink. How many would that bring joy to? If that would bring joy to you, raise your hands. I can remember, and I still do this at times, when we go through those toll gates, you go through them and pay, especially on our way to Delaware, we, we stop and we pay a toll. Why well, would give for the car behind me? And it always amused me the type of response you'll get. Drivers will come by and they'll either wave to you or they'll go like this to you or they'll go like this to you. <laughs> so it's always exciting to see what response you're going to get. That is what I get joy from. It's okay if they think I'm a little like this because I'll agree with them. Now, scenario two, you wake up Christmas morning and you find out that it snowed four inches overnight. Is that a joy? Because is it a pain? Because now you have to go out and you have to shovel the snow before you can go anywhere. How many feel that would be a joy? Where's the joy? Not that we like to shovel snow, especially if our snow blower won't start up. But to me, it's a joy because I would decide to stay home. <laughs> Enjoy the fireplace. Enjoy the peace. Now the third scenario, you water the Christmas tree enough so that it doesn't become dry and crisp and drop all its needles all over your floor. But you got to remember whose turn it is to water the Christmas tree. Is that a joy or is it a pain? How many feel it's a joy? The only problem I have at the house, we have three male dogs and they like the tree. They donate some water every now and then to that tree. <laughs> so now we don't get a live tree. Still don't help sometimes. Maybe some of you saw these situations as reasons for joy. Maybe some of you saw them as a pain our joy in life is largely connected to the circumstances in our life. The things are going poorly, we feel bad. When things are going great, we feel good. Our joy comes and it goes. See, 
I believe in the heart of Christmas, that's where Jesus comes in and gives us the joy, the joy that will not fluctuate with our moods, the joy that remains steady. All we have to do is fix our eyes on Jesus and fix our hearts on him as well. John began his gospel letter. He gave a different perspective at the birth of Jesus. Rather than tell us about the shepherds and the magi and the manger, he gave us the big picture, an explanation that took place in Bethlehem, which John wrote is a cause for joy no matter what we face in life. And I'm going to read that again. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of one day, the, and the one and only son that came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. What John described is known as the incarnation, coming from the Latin word came, which means came, which means flesh, flesh. The incarnation was God putting skin on and becoming one of us. Verse 14 says the word became flesh, the word is capitalized because it is the person of Jesus. He is called the Word because he is perfectly embodies all the scripture in human flesh by the way he lived here on earth. When Jesus was born in the manger, he was God coming to live amongst us. He was one of us. He had skin, he had bone, he had flesh. And he had blood. This passage gives us two reasons for joy. It does not have to change with the seasons or shift with our situations. It can be constant in our lives and a grounding attitude in the face of all that this world offers us. We have joy because God came to us. A common misconception people carry around with them is that to be re reunited with God in the right relationship with him, we must work super hard. That's not the case. We don't have to work super hard to be perfect or strive to make our way to him. One of the greatest joy robbers in our lives is thinking we can never be good enough. How many of us go through life thinking, I'll never be good enough? We are broken, all of us. We are flawed, all of us. Yes, we hurt others. Yes, we make mistakes. And yes, we live selfish lives. But if we are relying on our abilities to be connected with God, we'll always be disappointed. Always. In the discipleship journey, Paul Thigpen wrote about an encounter with his daughter. He says, I remember coming home one afternoon to discover that the kitchen I had worked so hard to clean only a few hours before was now a terrible wreck. My young daughter had obviously been busy cooking and the ingredients were scattered everywhere, along with the dirty bowls, the utensils. They were spread throughout the, all over the counters and the floor. I was not happy with the situation. Then as I looked a little more clearly at it, and closely, what a mess. 
I spied a tiny little note on the counter that was left. It was written clumsily, smeared with chocolate, and had fingerprints on it. But the message was short. I'm making something for you, Dad. And it was signed, Your Angel. In the midst of the disarray and the mess, and despite my irritation, joy, joy suddenly came over me. I suddenly took my attention and redirected it from the problem that that little angel had made into how much I loved her. As I encountered her in that brief note, I was so delighted in her. With her simple goodness and focus, I could take pleasure in seeing her. She was hard at work, making a surprise for me. Her hand, you could tell, was working hard for the fingerprints that was left. For all the ingredients that happened to be on the counter and on the floor, they took on a different meaning now. Well, see, the same is true with the joy that we have in God. Many times life can look like a mess, messy disaster. That's our perspective. It can be hard for us to find reason for joy in our circumstances. However, if we look closely, we might see God coming nearer to us like he did that first Christmas night, to let us know he's making something of our lives. And when we are tempted and feel hopeless, he is there. Joy is at the heart of Christmas because knowing that we can never make anything right, we can make it right with him. God came to us. It is the only religion in the world where the deity does what is necessary to unite with humanity. God came to us to show us and he wants us to be saved through Jesus. Now we heard read Romans 5, verse 8, and I'll read it again. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, for Paul, who was writing this, there's no such thing as a naughty list and a good list. We work hard to escape and earn to be on the good list. But if there's no such thing as a naughty list and good list, then what is there? The gift of God's love and grace, which is offered to us to be our own. While we are all sinners, Christ died on that cross for us. This is why the characters of Christmas story are so overjoyed from the shepherds in the field to those in the temple. Because the long-awaited arrival of Messiah meant God had finally come to rescue us. And the second reason joy can be constant reality for us in our lives is because of how much God loves us. How much God loves all of us. and how much he can, is committed to our transformation through his power. God loves all of us just as we are. And he loves all of us so much. Too much to leave us. God will never leave us. 
Looking further in John chapter 1, we find the author telling his readers that it is through Jesus that we see the glory and fullness of God. His arrival among us should fill us with joy because not only did God come close to us, but he came because he loves us, all of us. Do you realize that you are loved by God? Do you realize not just tolerated by God or put up with, but love, true love, deeply loved. That's amazing. That's wonderful. That's enough to give us joy. For John says this love that God has for all of us is like that of a father and his children. Jesus came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is key to understanding our second reason for abiding joy. Jesus came to us. He came full of grace. This grace that John writes about is the Greek word charis, which means favor, kindness, or a gift of blessing. What a blessing Jesus was. Like a wrapped gift shared from one another can bring joy to our hearts. So this gift of Jesus is grace from God. We haven't earned it. We don't deserve it. But God offers it to us anyway. And when we recognize it, it fills us with joy. God loves us just the way we are. Jesus also came full of truth. Jesus holds grace in one hand that allows us to be accepted into his family. And on the other hand, he holds truth that shows us the areas of our lives that we need to transform to live the fullest life possible. The fullest life that is possible means a life of happiness and of joy, a life of hope and of peace, a life of love. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, the author insists the reason Jesus came to us and manifested his love among us is because he desired for us to find incredible joy in him. In order for this to happen, it requires a gift of truth and grace. It is the most loving thing to do for one another, to embrace each other, with full acceptance and humble truth in telling. Joy is the result of grace. Grace is a word that shows up in the church a lot, but that is because it is the way in which we were able to live with joy. As a parent, I feel like I can identify with these passages and how grace and truth lead to joy. I can remember when I ran my daycare, I had several children in it that they always seemed to be in trouble. You know, those kids always seem to be in trouble. At least according to their parents, they always seem to be in trouble. It's amazing how I really never had any trouble with them. But I remember one Christmas time, I had a little girl in the daycare, she was four years old, And her mother insisted she was so bad. And she kept telling her, you keep being bad and there'll be no presents under the tree for you. Well, come Christmas morning, she also attended the church, my home church. Went to church. There sits the little girl crying. What happened? What's the matter? Why are you crying? Today's Jesus' birthday. We should be happy. Jesus forgot about me. There was no gifts under the tree.
That was n not what I expected to hear that a parent would do. We keep gifts away from a four-year-old. So that afternoon, I took her home with me, and she had gifts under my tree. I said, oh, well, I guess it was just confusing on which tree to put it under. So here, we have gifts for you. Grace and love. I had a little boy that was in my daycare, and he, there again, he had a lot of learning disabilities and was told he was not a good child. As a matter of fact, when he turned to be 15 years old, his parents threw him out of the house and said, go live somewhere else. I hadn't seen him for a while. And I was shopping in the store, and all of a sudden I hear this voice, Miss Debbie, Miss Debbie. And I'm looking around, I don't see anybody. And here, standing up on the ladder, stocking the top shelf, is this fellow with a beard and everything. He's yelling. And I'm looking at him like, how do you know me? He come down off of that ladder and he stood in the middle of that store and he screamed, this is the woman who told me I can do anything. I can be anything I want to be. All I'd have to do is work hard. He announced to everybody that he had gotten his GD. And he remembered, I told him, if you ever get into trouble, go to your uncle, who will gladly take you in, which is what happened. And then he announced he was going to college. Today, I follow him on Facebook. He's a proud father, treating his child with love. And if you ask him why, it's because he was shown love. Grace and love is what we need to show all year long, not just at Christmas time. See, our Heavenly Father sent Jesus to the manger in Bethlehem because he wanted to dwell amongst us. He wanted to demonstrate his grace and his life-changing truth. And when we can experience that, we experience a joy a joy in our lives that no matter what the circumstances, we feel God's love. And we know God is with us. And God is always for us. The late Pastor Charles Spurgeon said it in this way. There is a marvelous, Vincent, power like medicine that's in joy. Most medicines are distasteful. But what's the best medicine of all? It has a sweet taste and it has comforting to the heart. This blessed joy is very contagious. The spirit there are a couple different kinds of spirit. There's a spirit that can bring a play into a house. There's a, one person who is wretched, can seem to stop all the birds from singing. But the grace is joy. It's contagious. The holy joy will oil the wheels of your daily labor. It will oil your life. It will strengthen you. The holy joy strengthens you. Holy joy will beautify you and give you an influence over the lives of others. This Christmas may you come to find at the heart of this holiday is a deep and abiding joy because of the love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus. It holds the power to change us and to change the world. Imagine that, this chaotic world being changed. Amen.